Hi guys. It's another soupy, sticky day here in the end times. We had bugs in a jar farm uh, outside of Ithaca, New York on this gray, gloomy Friday, July 9th, 2021. I noticed the next 10 days in the forecast, there is no mention of the word sun for the next 10 days. But I don't have to worry about my pond. Anyway, I got to get over there to Collapse Chronicles and talk to myself with my weekly Manga Bay and Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant. You are certainly welcome to uh, go over to Collapse Chronicles and listen to that. And before we do that, we are going to go. It's been too long since we've been over to Zombie Island to uh, hear from our old buddy. Uh, what's his name? Has been so long. Andy the Gardener. I noticed Andy the Gardener whining on Collapse Chronicles recently that I no longer uh, went and highlighted his comments. So we're going to go listen to Andy the Gardener from a view from Zombie Island. But as long as we're over on. Zombie Island, right here on BBC News. We do have some good news, Andy, at least. Mothers lose fight against two-child welfare benefit limit. Hallelujah. Campaigners have lost their legal challenges to the government's two-child limit on welfare payments. They had argued the policy breached parents' and children's human rights. The Supreme Court dismissed their case. Yes, the rule which came into force in 2017 restricts child tax credit and universal credit to the first two children in a family. Hmm. This is called an austerity measure. Campaigners describe the decision as hugely disappointing. The case was brought by two lone mothers. I think lone mothers probably means single mothers and their children, supported by the Child Poverty Action Group. Yes. I love how they use the term fell pregnant. Yes, fell pregnant. I love, I love that term. How do you fall pregnant? Yes, the mothers claim the two-child policy was incompatible with human rights laws. Their argument was rejected in the lower courts and now rejected again in the Supreme Court. The campaigners had argued the rules unlawfully discriminated against different groups, including children, large families, women, and those with a religious or moral objection to the use of birth control. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, lawyers claimed that uh, the new rule is causing deep and inescapable child poverty and fails to recognize children as deserving of social protection in their own right. And guys, I have just enough of the snowflake left in me to, uh, to agree with that statement. But the eco-Nazi has overruled the, the snowflake uh, and it's time to cut the fucking crap on this. Hallelujah, Supreme Court cutting the, this shit off at two kids. We should be getting tax credits for having no children. Uh, Andy the gardener should be the richest fucking man in England, this side of the fucking king. Do they have a king? You know, from the tax credits he's racked up over having no fucking children. You know, we need this in the goddamn U.S. Uh, uh, I wonder if Joe Biden is, is reading this story. Yeah, so Supreme Court President Lord Reed, yes, giving the judgment, 
said the justices rejected the argument that the two-child limit was intended to discourage women in receipt of the benefits from having more than two children and so violated their right to respect for their private and family life. Fuck your private and family life. Go fuck yourselves, goddamn single mothers. Anyway, moving on, we're going to, now that uh, we've cheered on the British Supreme Court for uh, having a little bit of a brain, uh, we're going to hear from a, the biggest brain in Zombie Island. I think we need to put Andy the Gardener at the head of the British Supreme Court, Lord, Lord Andy. We're going to hear from Lord Andy. Uh, now, this is not an original comment. He's just copying and pasting uh, from a comment that he made. I guess there's some uh, film critic over there named Mark Kermodes, I don't know how, a British film critic. And this was Andy's, com uh, his review of the 2008 remake of that famous movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still. And, uh, but he thought that some of us, uh, I need to go. I, 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 don't, I think I might have watched the original version of that story, but it sounds like Andy gives it, Lord Andy gives it mixed reviews, and I had to, I just learned recently the term uh, CGI uh, as computer-generated images. So if you don't know what CGI means, <clears throat> All right, take it away. Film critic Lord Andy the Gardener. <clears throat> the Day the Earth Stood Still, 2008 remake. This is a reasonable film in its way. The usual childish Hollywood CGI laden fare with the usual boring human interest filler. Annoying kid and the usual human-centric happy ending, although actually not quite in this case to its credit. The alien, played by Canal Reeves, pretty much shares the same feelings about humans as Agent Smith and has decided to wipe humans out. <clears throat> the dialogue hits the spot several times, such as when the canal alien says to the incredulous human when she said, I thought you wanted to save the world. He responded, you misunderstood me. I said I was going to save the world, not save the humans. <clears throat> the humans, m meaning uh, the, the humans in, in real life, uh, not, not the, you know, watching the movie, I think are the humans he's referring to here. The humans really did not like the central premise of the film, which is why they panned it and focused on trivial things like the acting of Canal and a small child instead and many trivial details. I would have expected more from this commode fellow than anti-intellectual ad hominem arguments, but I guess he is just another normie human who does not want to think too deeply about the human-induced shitstorm unfolding on planet Earth. I suppose being a gatekeeper of the correct way of thinking is why he is allowed to be a famous film critic by the system. I, I, I can imagine uh, how many people uh, reading this review on uh, this film critic site have made it this far. <clears throat> of course, the film had major faults. It would have been much better if the entire film was a darkly comic, satirical set-piece debate between reps from all nations presided over by the aliens around a giant UN roundtable or something, a bit like in Dr. Strangelove, <clears throat> exploring what the humans are doing giving them a chance to explain themselves 
with the aliens explaining why they, meaning the humans, have to be exterminated with none of the usual CGI effects slash individual human family scenario <coughs> backstory filler bollocks, which is so boring and childish. <coughs> Maybe Reese Shear Smith could do something. I mean, anyway, I don't under, I don't know all these names he's mentioning. Anyway, but at least the film attempted, albeit fairly poorly to spark a completely missing debate about what humans are doing and what to do about them. If they are in fact a virus, as Agent Smith quite correctly called us in The Matrix, it is highly amusing and telling that the humans only seem to be able to admit that they are in a safe fictional setting, you know, talking about the humans watching the movie, uh, it's okay, son, it's only fiction. We are not really a fucking irredeemable planetary disease that needs to be wiped out. The film fails in that it gives the humans too much credit about being able, even theoretically, to be able to change. Change into what? A non-human life form? And the film places far too much importance on our amazing human emotions. Like having human emotions somehow makes up for the evil humans do. Feeling emotions does not give humans carte blanche to kill everything or overrule the alien's purpose, saving millions of other species from human predation. <clears throat> that excuse for not, you know, the one about having human emotions, that excuse for not blasting us off the planet was just lame. In any case, the aliens had been studying the humans for a century and our past history and knew all about us. <clears throat> they would know humans are hardwired, like all form life forms in the universe, to behave in a rigid set pattern as governed by their genetic programming, so would have known already that changing was absolutely impossible and it is far too late to change now anyway. The damage has been done. The price has to be paid in blood. The insatiable 8 billion plague of humans is driving conservatively 200 species per day to extinction. It, meaning the plague of 8 billion humans, it is far worse than that though. Entire biomes of millions of species are being completely wiped out and the entire planet has been pretty much already converted into toxic, filthy human factory and breeding colonies. The time for change was 1970 when scientists published the limits to growth as a warning to humanity, which was totally rejected. <clears throat> the aliens would know we are a lost cause that the humans always rationalize ways not to change. And the aliens would not have given a rat's ass about human emotions knowing we destroy life regardless of our so-called finer qualities. Yes. And mostly, in fact, because of them, humans would wipe out the, then in parentheses, humans would wipe out the Amazon to save one human baby or wipe out another nation to save their wonderful, righteous democracy, etc., etc. All 
human evil is done with good intent. We must feed the growing population. Yes, all human evil is done with good intent. I think this will be the title of this rant. <clears throat> but in giving the humans the benefit of the doubt that they in fact unwittingly took the best course of action, instead of wiping out the human species entirely, the aliens just terminated industrial civilization, also known as the mega cancer the tool by which humans are able to wreck the planet so efficiently. Well, duh! Why didn't they think of that before? You don't exactly have to be a genius to work that out. No need for swarms of stupid CGI techno nano and bot locust. All they would need to do is create EMP explosions in low orbit to knock out all the global communication systems and the entire edifice goes down like a tower of cards, it would be very easy. Our elites could do it and would do it if they were not viruses too. This is not a pleasant solution as almost every human would die except a few hundred Amazon Indians surviving in the tiny pockets that are now left of that once mighty rainforest. Boo hoo, but it is a compromise, I suppose. <clears throat> in my opinion, the ending nailed it because terminating industrial civilization is precisely what has to happen right now. It, terminating global industrial civilization, is the only way out of our predicament. E-cars and solar panels ain't the solution, I'm afraid, but an attempt to continue business as usual. As King Now said in the film, a sacrifice has to be made. Sadly, if the aliens did not also go around and make safe the 500 nuclear power stations the humans have created in their endless wisdom because they are a hideous virus, the Earth and any surviving Amazon Indians would still be completely fucked. It is as if the human mega cancer is holding a grenade with the pin out in case anybody, elites or aliens, tries to terminate it. Unfortunately, the film was not brave or honest enough to use that as an unexpected and brutal punch in the gut. Is it denouement? The planet is fucked, even if aliens did come to save it, and humans are a disease. Thank you, uh, Andy the Gardener. The planet is fucked, even if aliens did come to save it. Uh, and with that, I'm going to wrap up this now. We're still trying to get this interview with Andy the Gardener lined up here. Uh, Andy finally agreed to it. Now I'm having trouble getting Sandy pinned down like the little grease pig that Sandy Shellis can be sometime. But we really are. Uh, Sandy and I and Andy are going to have a conversation sometime in the summer of 2021. We're going to make this happen. But anyway, I got to wrap this up and get over there to Collapse Chronicles, where we're going to look at the how the planet has been collapsing uh, this past week. Come over to Collapse Chronicles for that show. Bye, guys. Dog, I got some bad news. You act like you're getting ready to get off this table and go get your chippies. What you don't understand 
is that we have our Manga Bay rant coming up, your least favorite rant of the week, and you're getting ready to get tortured. You act like your torture is done with. Your torture is just beginning. So you might as well chill out. You might as well chill out. We have a Manga Bay rant. Pop, I hate the Manga Bay rant. I don't want to hear Rhett Butler's name again, ever. I don't inflict the Manga Bay rant on me, Pop. Don't do it to me. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have to deal with it. Bye, guys.